Welcome to Flock Talk, Flock Talk, the podcast where we feature your favorite authors and narrators. Hosted by Craig Hart and Sarah Hannon. Visit us today at PinkFlamingoProductions.com. Pink Flamingo Productions. And now, Flock Talk. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Flock Talk. My name is Craig Hart, and I'm here with my compelling co-host, Sarah Hannon. How are things going in your world, Sarah? It's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> That's kind of sad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're usually such a jerk. Um, it's hot. It's hot over here. But I think I've convinced my spouse to finally put in air conditioners. You Although, you, you know, I probably shouldn't say that, but depending on when you <laughs> post this freaking interview. it's. I'll just say it's hot. It's hot. I'm sorry. It's hot. <laughs> well, I'll that... tell you, Craig, it's hot. It's really hot. It's really hot. You sit in a booth, you know, like, and your doors are closed. <laughs> yeah. And there's no windows. It gets hot. Yeah, I have. Um, my booth is near to the heater and air conditioner units. And so in the summertime, for example, I have to turn off the AC for a while to record. And if the family is home, it's like, oh, no, now it has to record. We're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, mm. come on. I'm the one sitting in a little box. Seven-year-olds, they don't, you know. Yeah, my hair is sweating, so what are you complaining about? My toenails are wet. (laughs) Well, I suppose we should get into today's interview now that I've disturbed everyone. How compelling is that? Hopefully nobody was eating lunch just now. (laughs) But we do have a fabulous guest today, probably our best ever, and I will kick off with the bio. Sarah Hannon has a B.A. in theater where she focused on acting and directing. Her experience on stage includes period dramas, Buster Keaton-style clown work, devised work, improvisation, musicals, children's theater, and comedies such as the complete works of William Shakespeare, abridged, by the Reduced Shakespeare Company. Her first audiobook, A Pack of Blood and Lies, by Olivia Wildenstein, Wildenstein, which is it? Wildenstein by Olivia Wildenstein, won the award for Best Audiobook at Pinned Con in 2019. She lives in New England with her family and enjoys making music, reading to her children, and amateur sewing projects. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you for being on Flock Talk for the first time ever. Wow, it's such a nice space you have here, Craig. Isn't it? I know. Welcome. Thank you. So what led you to doing audiobooks? Oh, that's a longer story than I think you were anticipating. So, <laughs> so I went to school for theater. I was anticipating a really long story. So, okay, I, I went to school for theater, you. as you said, um, uh, and it became clear to me as I was in theater that I did not like the. I was insecure because you know I was just I was just recently a teenager. I didn't feel like I, I got. I had it. some yeah. I had some really good roles in college and. Um, but I was I was nervous to actually try to make it, and I didn't understand that success doesn't have to be like. There's no one definition of what success is. I didn't want to spend my adulthood failing in everything, <laughs> you know. Like that's that's what? how I felt I was going to what I, what I was just, and then I would just feel bad about myself. And there's so much <laughs> that has to do with things you can't control. Um, in live theater and on camera work, you know, you're how you look, what size you are to some extent, um, and those things. So, like, I just backed off and I went into early childhood education for a while. And then I, I got married to my my college sweetheart and we had some kids. I ended up having to stay home with my twins because one of my children has um, special medical and intellectual educational needs so he was was too risky to put in any kind of care plus Mm -hmm. on a child care workers salary i have twins and yeah i would just break even so i stayed (laughs) home (laughs) with them and i was a little sad about it for a while and my husband was like why don't you try audiobook narration and i he and he's does tech theater and has a bunch of stuff so he set me up with a like in a little quilt bunker (laughs) with a microphone and I used Audacity and I auditioned for a book and I I booked the first book I auditioned for, which was like confidence inspiring. And I I didn't have to worry about like, I only had to worry about one thing, which was how I do acting. So it, it has to do with the craft and not 
anything else. I mean, yes, to some degree, what my voice sounds like, but, you know, can I embody, can I tell the story? Can I embody the character? I've been building up my confidence in that particular arena since since then, and that's been really nice. And my understanding, like, it's, if you know when you're in school what you know when you're an adult, you would could be so much more successful. <laughs> <laughs> There's that quote from It's a Wonderful Life, youth is wasted on the wrong people. And it's true. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, you know, if we had the energy and the motive and the drive and the knowledge, I don't know, it's nothing we couldn't do. Yeah, that the, is the audiobooks. long, not short of it, <laughs> how I got into audiobook narration. <laughs> to make a short story long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I guess the, the short version would be my husband suggested it one day, so I tried it and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I've always liked about audiobooks is just you have as many tries as you need or want to mm-hmm. get it right. And, like, there are so many characters that I can be in an audiobook mm-hmm. that I would never get cast at in real life. Like, I'm not a villain type. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, and, like, mm. I'm not an, oh. <laughs> I'm not an alpha male. You know, like, all these things mm. that I, I can... <laughs> All these things that I, I, you know, I would never be on stage. Right. I, I can be in an audiobook, and I, I just really like it. Speaking of audiobooks and different characters that you can play, I understand you have a pseudonym. I won't ask you to reveal this superhero identity, but what led to your decision to use a pseudo? So my pseudonym... Um, she narrates what I what I sometimes refer to as romance plus, um, oh. yes, with the with the sexy times uh, scenes and <laughs> and the like, and I have you know I have young kids and I just didn't want I'm not ashamed of any of it like I don't like it's all I tr- I try to stick to things that are like sex positive I don't just narrate anything that I that I get um, offers for because if it's not something that I feel like. I can stand behind as me. Also, I don't want to do it. Um, she gets a lot. She gets a lot of more work than I do um, <laughs> under under that name. So it's my choice to take the work and to do the stuff. But like, it's not my kids' choice. I I just wouldn't want. I live in a fairly conservative town, <laughs> and I wouldn't want you know, kids' parents saying, you can't go over to her house. Her mom's a sex worker or something, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though I'm not. But you, you know right. what I mean? Like, like her mom reads dirty books, you know, like. But I will introduce myself and, you know, like, oh, what do you do? Well, I read dirty, dirty books. I just, you know, like, <laughs> oh, I'm a lawyer. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm, a, I'm a sweet talker. I don't know. I, I just, I want them to be able to not worry about what their friends think if they Google their mom. When they find out that I'm an audiobook narrator. Well, speaking of the romance plus, um, obviously there are some steamy scenes in said books. Are there certain things you do to prepare for reading these scenes or do you just jump into them or do you you treat these projects differently than others? No, I I, I get a fan. I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I No, see, the thing I think that is scary for actors going into this for the f- first time is how to do that, how to approach that, how to not giggle or not feel weird or whatever. But that's that's where the, the, the acting comes in. You know, like you take your, you know, your given circumstances and you just have to be an actor at that time and approach mm-hmm. it like you do any other scene. And yeah, sometimes the words are a little silly. Sometimes you do giggle and you have to stop. And like you said, you know, you have as many chances as you want. But I do find that when I'm in the middle of a scene like that, I, I, I rarely have to stop recording to start over unless I mess up a, you know, a word or a f- phrase. Like I had one as she sashayed. And that took me like a half an hour. Is she shishay? <laughs> As she shishayed. Um, now I can say it anytime, anywhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> but at the time. But you, you just have to like, you just have to be like, no, I'm an actor. I'm a professional. I can do this. This is just like any other scene. This is just like the argument in the mall mm. with, the, with the, you know, teenager. It's, you know, it's just a different mood. You just have to sort of let that go. Let that fear go. I mean, we are... We are sexual beings as, you know, adults. It's part of life. And, you know, let's not be scared. Yeah, it was sort of like I remember when I was a screen actor and had to do my first nude scene. Um, that was 
I'm just making this up. (laughs) (laughs) Never happened, full disclosure. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. I was just trying to be relevant. No, but you're also a producer for Fireside Audio, Mm -hmm. part of Pink Flamingo Productions. What's your favorite part of that job? Creating relationships with authors and other narrators. I like people. I'm a people person. COVID's been hard for me. And I really like like getting to know people and reaching out to people. Like as a narrator, I like meeting other narrators because in like and sometimes, you know, you, you see a person around and you're like, oh, I wish I knew that person better. And then they audition for something and then you get to cast them in something and then you're like, oh, now I know you. <laughs> <laughs> now, going back to the narrating part, if you could narrate any book, what would it be? So I have a favorite author that I have um, have loved her for years and years. And um, I sort of relate to her on a, on a mental health level. We both struggle with depression. And I find her characters are just so relatable. And I love her so much. And um, her name is Marion Keyes. And she is Irish. And she spent time in England. So she's got this lovely little hybrid accent. But like, all, and all of her narrators are native from the UK so like there's never a million I like I wouldn't even want to try but yet I really would (laughs) (laughs) I would love to read her her books out loud for money any of them probably Rachel's Holiday or This Charming Man are my are like the ones that like hit me in the gut the best and (laughs) and that I would love to sink my teeth into but I love her. Speaking of narrators and then your associating with them as a narrator and then a producer, uh, who are some of your favorite narrators to listen to? Um, let's see. George Newbern narrated the previous version of the man, A Man Called Uva. That was amazing. He did such a good job. I think J.K. Simmons does the most recent. I have not listened to it. I used to listen to all the Harry Bosch books, and my favorite narrator for those was Len Carew. I love listening to Johnny Heller, and I love Kate Redding. She narrates, uh, oftentimes with her husband, Michael Kramer, a lot of fantasy. Um, I really like listening to uh, Brandon Sanderson's work, and uh, they do a great job together. I could keep choices. going, but I'll stop because yeah. <laughs> nice. I have a lot of favorites. <laughs> Last question before the infamous bonus round. What is your favorite piece of William Shakespeare trivia? William Shakespeare trivia? I didn't tell you to ask me this question. I don't know that I know a lot of William Shakespeare trivia unless it's about, like, things that happen in plays that people overlook. Friar Lawrence doesn't get enough credit for the murder of teenagers (laughs) in Romeo and Juliet, (laughs) as he should. (laughs) I'm very passionate about this. I really am, because he is culpable for so many acts. I mean, they were, they were children, Romeo and Juliet, and he was behind so much of the decisions. And in fact, at the very end of the play, he has the opportunity to act to save at least one of them, and he does not. And, and oh, he should gosh. get credit for this. Yeah, he should. I mean, when people are trimming down the play, they cut him a lot. You know, they just, they cut Friar Lawrence a lot. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because they don't understand his involvement or is it just a character that they don't think people are going to care about? I think it's more a practical thing. I think people are trying to focus on because at its at its basic base level, the story is about two feuding families, star-crossed lovers, they fall in love, you know, they make some horrible decisions. Romeo gets exiled and miscommunication and all this stuff and then they both die, which brings the families back together in a way. Like, they're like, oh, this is such a horrible thing. Let's have some peace. And yeah, that is probably the most important theme of the story is the, you know. So focusing on Friar Lawrence's culpability is could probably, you know, might take away from that. And, you know, Shakespeare plays are long and people have less and less of an att- attention span as you know, we get more and more reliant on devices and instant gratification. So, like, we're not ready to deal with all those layers and the and the implications of that. So, like, it's just a whole different conversation than the underlying theme of the play. So when you go to watch the play, do you I sit watch there for, in I fury? I watch for Friar Lawrence. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> just shaking with rage in your seat. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I just sometimes I just wish that they would let it be because because it's a tragedy that doesn't have to be so tragic. And he makes a bad decision. All right. Well, that wraps up all of my main questions. Are you prepared for our hot six bonus round? Hmm? I sure am. Mm-hmm. Bring it on. Buckle up, listeners. It's time for Hot Six. Question one. What is the most overrated book you've ever read? On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Question two. What famous literary work have you never read but feel like you should have? Well, congratulations on puberty. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to say I hate to admit this one. Hmm. The Great Gatsby. Oh, well, that wraps up the show for derision. today. <laughs> 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 no. All right. Question three. If you could be any Gatsby for one day, what would you ask? <laughs> if you could be any animal for one day, what would you be? Oh, um, something safe. A house cat, probably. I know we get that answer a lot. Yeah, but a maybe one. a monkey. <laughs> 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 something that can swing. I'm afraid of heights, me, but like I would love to be something that's not. That was just like I would love to swing for my tail. All right, we'll go with monkey. Question four: What is your biggest grammatical pet, Gatsby or Peeve? <laughs> I'm silly today. What is happening? You are silly today. I love it. Um, I think on accident. Yeah, I said it by accident. Ah. Oh, I did it on accident. I don't know why. I just like. Um, <laughs> I want more. More, more grammatical more pet peeves. peeves. Okay, um, a lot. There's a space between a and lot. Um, <laughs> you mentioned loose and lose. That one's that one's rough for me. And also, you know what? Text speak. I find annoying. I've been finding it less annoying as time goes by, <laughs> because I think I'm getting more <laughs> used to it. But and and also though my dad when he would write me letters as a kid before we could text each other would write the letter C the letter U L eight R that kind of thing so like I grew up on it in some way because he would see you let eight or um, <laughs> in letters wow yeah in yeah B C N U you know but I don't know all of the oh L O L I hate L O L I hate it <laughs> question five. Looking back over your entire lifetime, what is your most embarrassing favorite song? That would be I Can't Smile Without You by Barry Manilow. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> However, I had already, like, I just, I find it inherently silly. And my husband and I went to see, um, what's that movie with Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson? And it's a remake, Starskin Hutch. We went to Starskin Hutch and it starts with that song and it's like panning over the ocean and these whistling and I know exactly what's coming and I'm the only person in the theater guffawing because <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna love this movie <laughs> I'm in yeah I'm an I'm, a, I'm an all in I am ready question six what is one thing you wish you could uninvent chewing gum it's gross it makes gross noises nobody is good at chewing gum uh, so, you know, breath purposes, just breath mints are the option. Sure. Yeah. 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 I think or the brushing only... brushing one's the, teeth as a last my, resort. Yeah. Brushing your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, maybe the only caveat is like nicotine gum, people who are using it to quit smoking. How about flying in airplanes for uh, going up? You know what? We don't have to pick it, pick it nits here. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to be difficult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Answer accepted. Thank you. <laughs> well, Sarah, thank you for joining us today on Flock Talk, taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, no, thank you. My pleasure. And also being the best podcast co-host I've ever had. So oh, that's the, the only nicest one you've thing ever, I've ever had? said to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. It's very nice. I have had more than one podcast host and hopefully... Nope, none of them are listening to None us. of them are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being the most recent podcast really? co-host I've ever had. <laughs> Named Sarah without an H. <laughs> give very specific. Yeah, it's very specific. Who has red hair and... <laughs> and records on Wednesdays. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. I think enough of this silliness. I don't think anybody or the public can handle much more of this. So thank you, no. everybody, for listening to Flock Talk. We appreciate your time. Have a good day. Thank you. You've been listening to Flock, Flock Talk, Talk, the podcast where we feature your favorite authors and narrators. Hosted by Craig Hart and Sarah Hannon. This podcast is produced by Pink Flamingo Productions. Pink Flamingo Productions. Editing by Craig Hart. Visit us today at pinkflamingoproductions.com. Pink Flamingo.